about to set the multi aqua MHRC2 the heat recovery chiller in place we just poured the pad and I'm um, picking it up and bringing it over close to where she needs to go so we can start plumbing this to my house we'll be beta testing this unit and it'll be hooked to the internet there's software that accompanies this so you don't have to manually do any of the settings there's a lot of controls a lot of settings everything from uh, changing uh, the RPMs of the compressor to monitoring temperature sensors, flow sensors. Uh, there's a lot uh, to monitor and to check, so I'll be able to do that. I got a laptop dedicated for that, and so it's time to plumb. And uh, let's go put her in her new home. Looking forward to running this baby not only on the grid but off of my solar system that I'm installing simultaneously. So a lot has come together. Real thankful to uh, Ralph Ferry over at Multi Aqua for uh, helping me. Uh, this has been his uh, project for the last five years to develop this, manufacture it, and get it ready to go. And we're working together to couple this unit with uh, solar systems to have some off-grid, simultaneous cold and hot water production. Before we can put the chiller in, we've got to remove my existing four-ton tap-in outdoor condensing unit. We will eventually pro replace not just this four ton unit, but a two and a half ton unit that is sitting right next to it with the Multi Aqua MHRC2. So, right, but before we can do that, we need to pump down the refrigerant that's in the unit, and we're going to do that right now. And so, and then what we'll do is clean up this area, pour a concrete pad because the chiller is pretty heavy, it's about 800 pounds. So we'll be pouring a slab here after we uh, pump this unit down. So um, we're going to actually use the compressor to pump itself down, normal operation, and removing refrigerant safely. So here we go. Let's remove the old and put in the new. Okay, as we switch over to um, water, this is uh, we're going to replace the A coil that's in my air handler with this uh, five-ton. Uh, hydronic a coil and it fits pretty close in the air handler but we're gonna have to do some a little bit of sheet metal work what we're doing now this this actually came out of a damaged unit fell off of a truck so what we're doing before we do go through all this work is pressure test uh, make sure there's no leaks and so far so good and there's room so we're gonna go ahead and put this one in place so no more refrigerant in the house that's the goal all right we're getting the r22 out of here we're getting this uh, a coil replaced with the water coil in my existing air handler because i didn't want to do a new air handler because i've already got my wood boiler coil in here so the four pipe chiller will tie into my heat side and the cold side and so we'll control uh, the cooling we'll run a thermostat to a uh, bypass valve mounted on the uh, new coil so but first we got to get this one out the new one in Make sure the drain pan fits and then block any holes around the coil um, so we don't bypass it with the return. I'll shoot this. Um, all right, we have taken our piece of sheet metal to lock this uh, coil in. And uh, go ahead, we'll put some screws in that and one in a coil. Can I let go of this yet? Yeah. All right, so that's all we had to do to get that five ton hydronic coil in a four ton space. So this is good, just one little dam. This coil's a lot taller, a lot longer than the other one, but it looks like everything's gonna fit. Okay, I'm back uh, running some tests on the chiller, and I know you probably can't see the screen. I'll put a screenshot in there. I wish you could see this a little bit better. I'm gonna zoom in. What this is telling us is that we have 45 degree, 45.3 degree water going out of the chiller and pumping through my um, hydronic coil. It's an eight coil in my air handler, and I'm running full bore. It, the ambient temperature outside is currently 95 degrees. The unit is only running at about 14.6 amps at 230 volts, and that puts me at about 57%. It's running at 3,640 RPMs. It can go up to max of 5,000 RPMs. 
So I'm only using, I'm using less than 15 amps to keep a 4,300 square foot home at 74 degrees on a 95 degree day. Hot, right, direct sun. So this unit is also in a direct sun. I'm only doing the cooling loop. I'll show you the heating loop next. We've got a, got a couple weeks before I get the heating side of this done so it can take advantage of the heat recovery. Right now we're seeing awesome numbers and we're experimenting with a pump, circ pump, that's a little bit underrated. Trying to save some energy there. If I had a faster pump, um, we'd be pulling, be able to pull more out of that and, and really cool down the house. But it's doing great for, we're, 10, we're 20, 22 degrees below ambient, the whole house is being kept. So I don't think we can beat this. Okay, I know that it wasn't, uh, you weren't able to see it too well on the screen. And hopefully you can see it on my flute here. But we are pulling 15.2 amps right now. And I hope you can see that. Zoom in a little bit better. There, 15.2 amps. That I see it good now. 230 volts, and uh, that's just absolutely wonderful compared to the old dinosaurs of heat pumps that I've had. And uh, this ECM module is awesome. I'm able to do a lot from this keypad. I will have this thing hooked up to Ethernet and its own dedicated landline soon. I hope you can hear this over the fan. It's an extremely quiet unit, but this the microphone on my camera is ridiculous. So this is what we want to see. So what I want to do now is I want to throw the switch. I'm running on grid right now and I want to run this on solar because I'm only 15 amps at 240. And um, where are you? Now I'm down to 14.9. Okay, we're gonna do we're gonna do another test here coming up. This is awesome. But I'm gonna hook my Ethernet in here and, and then I can, it'll have its own dedicated IP address where I can uh, log on, anybody can log on and monitor all the, the flow rates, the temperatures in and out, and any other parameter that we're allowed to. We can do a lot more than what we can do on this pad. We can do a lot, but we can do a little bit more from this, uh, the software from MCS. Okay, for the circulating pump that we're using for the uh, multi-aqua chiller. We wanted to try the Taco 0014. Thought it might give us enough head pressure and flow. And it's doing great. You see the condensate coming off of it now. I've used a lot of these on wood boiler projects and they've been fantastic. So, But we have found from the specs that the Taco Viridian pump would be a great match for the MHRC2 chiller. So, But now this is doing great. Taco 0014 and you can see we're, we're basically pumping it over to our, our bypass we have our bypass loop and our two-way zone valve and uh, we just put this together quickly it's not insulated but the Taco pumps have been fantastic I've run those for over 10 years on my wood boilers and have no problems with them at all okay very excited to do this test we've got our Outback Radiant in I am in uh, off-grid mode. I've got my AC input off. I've got my inverter on, and I'm about to start the multi-aqua chiller. All right, I'm going to be running off this battery bank. Okay, I wanted you to see the meter. I captured the inrush when we switched from on the grid to off the grid with the Outback Radiant. It, it never changed. It held right at 14 and a half amps. Again, this is a five-ton unit, 95 degree ambient, making 46 degree water and keeping my house at 74 degrees and just really happy. It's a little bit cloudy today. I'm gonna to go check to see how the charge controllers. Well, I, my goal was to figure out if the, I could, the amount of solar would equal the amount being used by this unit, the circ pump, and the squirrel cage fan that's in my air handler. Right now I'm running 5,200 watts, but it's no surge, folks. This is what allows us to do this on solar. Okay, here's the energy source that we're using to run the chiller. We have two solar arrays, 24 modules at 325 watts each for a total of 7,800 watts of energy that we can direct over to the multi-aqua chiller. And we were running yesterday neck and neck. The amount of solar being produced was running the chiller. So very successful, very happy. We can make air conditioning off of solar. All right, I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. If you can see the numbers on the charge controllers, I'm putting out about 2,900 watts on the West Array, 26, 2,700 watts on the East Array. So what is that? That's about 56, 
I'm running, well it's gone up, 50, about 5700 watts on the charge controllers and look what number I see on the inverter, 5700 watts. I am matching, uh, so the, the solar panels are matching the load of the multi-aqua chiller plus the circulating pump plus the air handler. So we are basically not even touching this battery. Battery voltage is still, still up there. She's inverting, but the solar's keeping up. Oh, that's, that is success. And I'm really excited. I'm not using any grid support. You see the AC input light flashing. I could steal a little grid help here, but I'm not gonna do it. I'm running completely off grid with the Outback Radian. And uh, when you see AC input flashing, that means you do not have any AC input support. So if you think I'm cheating, you can look that up in the Optics Mate um, manual. So, all right, very good. We're putting in 110 amps coming off the solar array right now at about 90 volts, 92 volts. Um, so I'm, I'm psyched. Okay, all right, we're saving those batteries. Woohoo! Success. Okay, at the heart of the chiller is the Copeland Scroll Variable Speed Compressor. Because of this compressor and the inverter technology that accompanies it, we can run this off of solar. It has very low locking rotor amps, which makes it just a perfect application for solar.